And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, welcome to the Weighing In Podcast. We don't have any fights this week so we decided you know what we're gonna just talk a bunch of crap about everything that's happening <laughs> yeah, man, man, we're gonna talk about sean o'malley did not lose his title according to him yeah who else says he did but he didn't lose it we've got dana white going into boxing we've got jake paul saying things like i'm gonna leave dana white alone as long as he does this one thing oh jeez. Right. <laughs> my man i have been watching grandkids all day long this is probably the greatest moment of my day because I really don't have little guys going zing, zing, zoom, zoom, zing, zing, bang. Just jumping off of everything. Kids are everywhere these days, man. My God. <laughs> Kids are everywhere. You get in your 60s, you can't keep up, man. No, I'm 60s. I'm in my 40s, John. I Jesus. can't keep up. I'm struggling. I'm struggling nonstop to keep up with these little rug rats running around. I swear. And if it's not mine, it's like some of my friend's kids or just sports in general. I'm just trying to keep up with them nonstop. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I if you notice, I'm not wearing glasses today, John. Yes, I see that. I went to go get LASIK, and uh, they told me you can't get it. <laughs> I was like, you sons of guys. Why? Uh, because I am I'm far sighted, and so far sighted LASIK doesn't fix far sighted. It only fix near sighted. They said, uh-huh. "Yeah, doctors will do the far sided, but you're going to pay the forty five hundred dollars or five grand, and then within like say two years, you're going to need it again." I was like, "Yeah, well, thanks for letting me know." He's like, "Yeah, you can do a like a a lens replacement, which is pretty common now these days." Yeah, he's like, "It's pretty common." He's like, "Yeah," I'm like, okay. "Yeah, I think I'll pass on that." Yeah, for right thank now. you very much. I'll wear, so, I'll, I'll, I'll replace my lenses on my glasses then. Well, he he was like, he's like, "Oh, it's pretty much as common as the LASIK surgeries now." He's like, "And they last pretty much forever." He's like, "But." They are, they're way more expensive. So he goes, they cost about 12 to 14 grand. Um, he goes, but, and your insurance doesn't cover any of it until you got some sort of cataract. So until like you're in your sixties, like you're in your eighties. So like, that's kind of a good time for you to start getting it because then your insurance insurance covers, I think he said 80% of it normally. Okay. So that that's makes sense. That. You don't want, like, oh, you don't want, you don't, you need glasses. Okay. Glasses are yeah. good for you. Okay, yeah. first off, here, dude, you're married. Let's be honest. You shouldn't be out there, you know, trying to find anything, anyways. And the glasses make you look more intelligent. It's gonna take a lot more than glasses, my friend. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm trying like, to help you out here. Let's man. just let's just be honest yeah. with each other, okay? I, mean, I, I have you around because you you pretty much speak the truth to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> like it, uh, yeah. So once I realized that, he's like, "Hey, let's go ahead and try." So I've been wearing some contacts. I tried contacts before. Yeah. I don't know what brands those the other company gave me. They're a lot better. In California. Now. No, but I mean, I, this was a year and a half ago. I couldn't, I couldn't wear them for like two, three hours without my eyes drying out, them yeah. scratching my eyeballs. I've had these on since 8 a.m. this morning, 8.30. Right. And I haven't had to worry about it all day. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what? If this is the brand I got to go with, this is the brand I got to go with. So oh. I'm feeling a little bit better about it now. I mean, I don't mind putting things in my eyes. I've been punching the eye enough, so I'm good. Yeah. But it, it was when he, when he had lost my breath, I was like a sense of just slouched in my seat when he said, yeah, you're not really a candidate for it. I'm like. You shut your mouth, dude, you. when you're talking to me. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> oh, I no, went there. Who made ju- you a doctor? Yeah, I went there just for that. I was like, man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Go back to school and get a better degree. Yeah. Come back and tell Ooh. me the truth. Um, yeah, so that was my that's how I spent my morning. And uh yeah, just you know, and then I did a two hour long podcast with the, with someone. And uh, it was funny, man. Sapata brand, I think it was on the podcast. We just got to talking, man. I don't know when it's going to drop or if it did drop. I don't know. But anyway, super nice guy, man. Uh, he does, I guess, a, a couple little things with Teddy Atlas and some other guys. And and I was like, you know what? Sure, man. Like, And I've, I've told people on our show plenty of times that, you know, if you guys have a podcast and you guys want to try to grow it and you guys want to have me on, just reach out to me in my DMs, you know, and let me know and I'll try to come on. I mean, I'll do the best I can. If uh, it's just not, if the time doesn't work, the time doesn't work. But today, man, I ended up being, I was like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll do it for 30, 40 minutes, you know, and give them some time. And because I know how frustrating it is trying to book guests, man. Oh, it's, it's, uh... it's so, it is so difficult. And not just, what I mean by difficult is it's not hard to, to get in contact with them. It's hard to get them to actually come on. It's hard like, to it's get the something. date, the time and everything, yeah. wherever it all works for them. It works for yeah. you guys. You know, it's... Well, it's more difficult for us because you're on East Coast time. Yep podcast dave and myself are on central, central. and then george, george is on, is west on coast. pacific 
<laughs> so yeah, Pacific. So it really just kind of like, man, it depends on who's filming with us that day. If we even have someone sometimes, Yep. just you and I. So anyways, uh, it's not as easy. So when he's like, Hey, you know, if you can give me some time. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I went on, we had a good talk. I think we talked for about an hour and a half. It was good. You know, just, you know, open stuff. It wasn't always about, it wasn't all about fighting. It was about just, you know, life a little life. bit. It was fun. Super cool guy. Yeah, that's good. Um, but hey, you know what? Since uh, we're getting ready to start this uh, show, I want to remind you guys, this show is brought to you by BetUS. And also want you guys to head on over to OnlyFans. We have now uh, rejoined with them, partnered with them again. And so we'll be spending the, at least the next year with them and uh, head on over there, man. Extra content available, doing live chats over there. Uh, doing some more stuff. Also, I want to remind you guys, our Tuesday nights are going to be live shows. All right. Um, outside of something, barring that, it will pretty much be 8.30 Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. That will be our time slot um, pretty much going forward for live shows, super chats, all that type of stuff. So if you guys want to jump on in, become a member, that would be great. $4.99 for, um, for opportunities to uh, win packages that we put together. We're going to be trying to do like giveaways once a month. Uh, we did one uh, this month already, so we're going to try to do one uh, starting off for October, October for Halloween. And I do want to thank you guys, man. This should be a fun, a very fun experience. Um, we also offer a one ninety nine membership, also too that gives you an asterisk next to you, an asterisk, like a little star or emoji or whatever next to your name. So when we see you guys in the super chats, we obviously want to answer your guys' questions first and get to you guys. And I just thank you guys for continuing to support us. I mean. We're 125, pretty much 125,000 subscribers in, and, and we couldn't have done any of this without you guys. So thank you guys so this much. Is true. Continue to uh, support us. We appreciate you. And uh, if you guys want that extra content, head on over to OnlyFans and subscribe to us over there. It is free. All right. And thank you guys. This is going to be awesome. Preach. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's jump right into our first thing. Jake Paul. Jake Paul had a little something back. to say about Dana and him backing out of him backing out of uh, giving Dana a hard time and and all of these things. Now, look, I believe, my personal opinion, I believe there's more to this story that we just don't know. I believe that Jake Paul is probably working some sort of a side deal in boxing with probably uh, Saudi Arabia or, uh, you know, or somewhere in the Middle East. Wow. He's probably working some sort of little side deal, so he's going to have to play nice. Uh, it's cause funny because this whole thing came about right after uh, Noche. And guess who was there? Jake Paul. Uh, yeah, Jake Paul was there. But guess who else and? was there? And uh, I can't Turkey. remember his name. Turkey. Turkey. So Turkey was there. Jake Paul was there. Jake Paul went disguised. Did you see that? Yeah, he did. That was hilarious. I thought the, was no, the, be the better part of it was Dana was you know, advised that, oh, you know, Jake Paul, you know, he you know, disguised himself to get in. He goes, why? <laughs> he's not banned. He's, he's not banned. Yeah. I just love that part, man. I was like, all this stuff, I'm banned from the UFC in this year. Uh, dude, he had Oscar De La Hoya there. If he's not banned, Jake Paul's yeah. not yeah. banned. <laughs> yeah, Let's right. be honest. So. If De La Hoya's not banned, dude, yeah, like pretty much it. no one's banned. Boom. Um, you know, there's guys that are banned for basically copying and printing up their own passes yeah, and stuff like that. Different. But that's, that's, that's different. That's someone that's stealing from them. Yeah. Says now speaking. So he's uh, Jay Paul was speaking on his podcast. Says, says he asked to Dana White and the UFC is to change the pay to minimum pay to 50,000. Yeah. He believes that is very reasonable or feasible to do to the UFC, but Paul doubts White will do it. Uh, the only thing I've um, I've really asked, sorry, guys, even though my glasses are not on, uh, everything I've ever asked is for the minimum fight pay, which is 12500 to be changed to 50000 Paul said. So all, the fighters... All asked. What's that? That's, that's all, all I've asked. asked. Yeah, you're asking somebody <laughs> that's, that you... It's not your company. Yeah. Like, God, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, so the fighters who have to work multiple jobs, if they once a year... Uh, if they fight once a year, they would still be able to to lie, uh, to live off of that. I mean that's not I know I know it's not re unreasonable to ask that. But that's also that's also like look, if I'm stepping into a job for the first time, into the biggest job, you know, into the biggest company, yeah. you got to work your way up. Well, that, see, my, yeah, it's exactly it. You know, the, how many times have we talked about and I'm I'm going to put this out there. Look, I'm I'm all for it. When <laughs> You know, back when you're they all had, for what? Wait, wait, wait. You're all for what? I'm all for people making money. Oh, absolutely. Okay, but you have to bring value. Okay, mm -hmm. and when it, it's how many times have we said, you know, I don't care if it's the UFC, if it was Bellator, if it's the PFL, when you are getting your first fight in that promotion, 
It's like a job interview, man. You're out there to prove yourself to the boss who is sitting there. If Dana's sitting there, if it was Scott Coker and now Mike Kogan with the Bellator, or if it's Don Davis and Pete Murray, it's a damn interview. You're trying to prove your value. You're trying to prove your worth to them. You're trying to show them, hey, I'm somebody you want. And it's a matter of, you know, all these people that, you know, are in the early fights, the preliminaries, Look, I love them, no disrespect, but for the most part, you're not the ones putting butts in seats, especially when you're talking about the UFC. So what you're looking for is to be that person that people want to watch, they want to see. Now you're going to be the person starting to put butts in seats or eyeballs on the screen. That's when your pay structure starts to go up. But to sit there and say, look, I'm all for fighters making money. But to sit there and say that someone who has zero fights in the UFC, you know, and has been fighting, we'll say for, you know, 10 fights, we'll say, you know, coming into the UFC, we'll say they're eight and two, nine and one, 10 and oh, whatever they are. To say they deserve $50,000 for the fight. Not really, because yeah. you're, you're actually still in the slot that you're in. You're costing the UFC more than you're giving them in return. And so. I mean, I understand why Dana doesn't pay those people a lot. Yeah. When it gets into like the ultimate fighter and you win the ultimate fighter, I would like to see him have a little bit better contract. When you get into the Dana White series, though, man, no, that is that right there. That's a job interview. You're interviewing to be part of the UFC. You know what? There is a contract that comes with it. If you don't want to, you know, sign that contract, then don't sign the contract. It's fine. No one's forcing you. But to sit there and say that the UFC should pay people $50,000 for their, you know, their lowest minimum. And I, I honestly, I, I don't see it. It's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you're not getting any sympathy from me, by the way. Yeah. I see, mean, I, I fought for two and, and, and two, look at dude, and, four okay. and four, six and yeah. six. <laughs> see, well, you, sorry, man. you can't go all the way back and say, well, it's the same. No. It is a little different, but still, I mean, Josh, you're, you're you, right. You want to know what's different, John? You're all for the fighters making money. I'm all for fighters John, making money. John, but you I, know what you the difference is? You got to be reasonable. Is? Let's be let's be honest. Two and two, four and four, eight and eight was what was what I was making for those fight. My yeah. fight with Eves, I made eight grand. Yeah, eight thousand dollars. I was supposed to make sixteen if I won the fight. Yep. That was for basically the UFC lightweight title. It should have been for. That's what the difference is. These guys are not fighting world class. They're not fighting the best guys in the division. I was. I mean, Gerald Servant, I could give a little bit on that. Okay, but Hermes Franco was like number two or number three when I yeah, beat him. He was up there. And, you know, and he fought for the title against, you know, Sean yeah. Shirk when Sean Shirk was the champion, you know. And so when we are having this conversation back then, we were making pennies on the dollar, like just nothing. Yeah. It was, it was chump change. Now they were hemorrhaging money. So we appreciated the fact that they were doing it for us. I think we had this conversation. You guys have to go back and listen to Dean Thomas's interview that we had on a couple of days ago. Or Jens just Pulver. talking and just coming Pulver up for sure. Just talking about, Hey, at the time things were definitely different, but when we were fighting those guys back then, we were fighting the best guys in the sport, not the best guys just in the UFC, the best guys overall in the sport. There was no other promotion that was really doing, at least for the lighter guys. Yeah. The heavier guys were over in pride. We get yep. it. There was a good cross of certain yeah. guys were good. Certain guys, you know, were good here. Certain guys were good over there in pride, but the lightweights had really no other place to go. So we were fighting the best guys in the world. Uh, you know, it was, you know, Dean Thomas, Uno, you know, uh, BJ, obviously Matt, Sarah. I mean, you had the guys. And so there was no other guys for us to fight. Hermes Franker came along and, you know, and this type of stuff. So anyways, we were getting paid nothing. These guys that are coming into the sport at 12, five. Yeah. I fucking wish <laughs> I was, you know, it, it, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can look at and you can say, could the UFC obviously improve in fighter relations as far as things in the contract? Sure. They could, you know, but to sit there and say that they owe them 50, uh, a fighter 50,000 as a minimum, it just, it makes no sense business wise for the UFC to do that. Well, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. These guys are having shows. <clears throat> these guys are having shows pretty much every weekend. If you really want to make more money and you're young and up and coming on this and you're on that rookie contract, 
fight more often. Oh yeah. Be available. And do fight what it out. Kevin Holland. Yeah. Do what Kevin Holland did. Do what Chamayev did in the beginning during COVID. Fight. Yeah. So some of you guys are acting like as if, oh, I won this fight. I got to hold on to that win as long as you could. I mean, the my biggest knock on myself was I fought for Strike Force after the UFC and Pride. I fought for Strike Force, but it was it was a U.S. show. It was basically a regional show. There was no fights out of the country, so we didn't have we weren't as active as the UFC was at the time. And I wish that they were more active. I would have fought a lot more. How many times I called Coker and was like, "Hey, man." It's been four months. I need to fight. He's like, yeah, I got you on the next one. Didn't get booked. Bro, I thought I was on the next one. No, 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 no. I'm coming back to no, San Jose. The you know, next I'm like, one. yeah, but that, I'm like, <laughs> you come back to San Jose. I know you, I know you're coming back to San Jose, yeah. but like that's three months away. That means six months without a fight. I mean, you're four months, five months. It's like it ended up being seven, eight months almost every time I fought. And so basically you're only getting two fights a year if you're lucky, depending on the schedule. And it was like, shit, man. That's what sucked about that. I was making more money, but I wasn't I wasn't given the opportunities to fight as much as I could have. Because then when I got injured, fuck, I was out even longer. Yeah. And so for these guys that are coming over, making 12-5, man, thank your lucky stars. You guys be appreciative. I understand what Jake Paul is trying to do. Now, if you, Jake Paul wants to talk about percentages of what the fighters are bringing in, then go ahead and let's talk about that. They're, right now, I think they're taking the 17%, 18%, I think is what they're getting, somewhere around there. If you want to up it to 20 to 21%, I think that's better I'm because now they it. can now they can spend it on the fighters that are actually generating eyeballs. But that so, exactly, that's based upon the people that are actually bringing eyeballs to that show. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important and that's those are the guys that deserve or or the ladies that deserve the extra amount of money based upon they're the ones that are helping the ratings, they're the ones that are doing more media, they're doing they're the ones doing all the work, mm -hmm. you know, and it's work. It, it is work to be that person that's put in that position of, I got to sell this show. I got to sell this fight. It's, it's no. not, it's not a simple thing. I agree. I mean, we, we've had, um, you know, we've had uh, Sean Brady just recently on check out that interview as well. Yeah. I mean, being the main event is a lot different and look than at what being he on said. the undercard. Yeah, that's it. It's distracting, man. It takes up a lot of time. Umar Namagomedov saying the same thing. Like, look, man, when I called him uh, a month before his fight, he's like, he's like, brother, you know, I always come on. I always come on your show. He's like, but they've got me doing so much stuff. I'm literally having to figure out how to fit my training in. Yeah. He's having to tell them, no, like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. And that that pisses them off too. Sure. So, but then they they work around it because he's got a big fight and it's a big deal to him. But I feel bad just even asking, just knowing like, hey, you're the main event now, and this is a lot of pressure. This is yeah. a lot that goes on to, into this. He never stops training. He's always ready for fights. And those are the guys that should be getting paid a little bit more. Yeah. Those are the guys that that are carrying the weight of the actual promotion on their back. That's it. And I'm not knocking the ones that are coming. And I get it, man. Twelve thousand five hundred though is a lot of money. It's a lot of money if you're just. It just. I'm just being honest. If you're it's not. Paid, I'm not going to sit there and say it's a lot of money. But for what? It, it, go to boxing, okay? Go to boxing and, and do a small yeah. show and see what see what the six hundred and six hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like oh, you know, all boxers make a lot of money. No, no, a very small percentage at the very top they make a lot of money. Like I don't, I don't under, I don't think MMA, maybe MMA fans do know this. Boxing is like I trained a guy who used to who was uh, managed by I think what they called Goose and Tudor or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, he was managed by them, and he was supposed to be like the next thing. So I, I did his cardio with him. I helped train him for his conditioning, his cardio his a little bit of his muscle uh, strength conditioning. And he ended up losing to Angulo. Okay. He got knocked out by Angulo and like, like El six or seven, yeah, he got knocked out by Angulo like the sixth or seventh round. And um, then he just became a stepping stone. That was it. Like MMA is a sport where if you lose, you can make a run to the title after that. Oh yeah. In boxing, if you lose, yeah, it, in the, especially in a smaller show, and completely, you're pretty different. much done. You're yeah. done. You, the only thing that's valuable to you is your O. That's it. Once your O is gone, psh, I mean, he was like 15, 16 and O, and then he he lost to Angulo, and that was his first loss, I believe, and he got knocked out. And then his next fight, they were like, "Hey, you just got knocked out by Angulo. Let's have you fight Kirkland." <laughs> James Kirkland. So then he, yeah, James Kirkland. So he fought Kirkland and he lost to him too in a decision. But still, like he got dropped three times in that fight. You know, throughout I was like, damn. 
but he once you get signed to a bigger promotion, they don't they don't really take care of you. It's like, hey, sink or swim, brother. They'll uh-huh. take care of you a little bit, not promotion promoter. They they'll take care of you a little bit, but you know they're also getting greased from the other promoters to get their guys. You know, um, pl- you know, on a, on a established like, hey, my guy's also undefeated. Your guy's undefeated, but I think your guy's a little bit better. But I'll I'll piggyback on you if you do this, do that. Boxing's a fucking corrupt industry. We know. Oh, it's Everyone knows it's fucking yeah. so. Yeah, and what you'll get is you'll get a manager who will know. Uh, you know, my guy does not match up well with Angulo, mm-hmm. but they offer him a specific price, and he goes, "Oh, I'm going to make this percentage off it." Yeah, we'll we'll take that fight. Yep. knowing it's a bad fight for his fighter. Yep. And you look and you go, man, yeah. it's, a, it's a brutal sport. It's a mm-hmm. brutal world. But yeah. And then the thing is, is because the, there's only a handful of promoters that have locked down boxing, they can get you into any big shows. They know that. Yeah. So, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. They've they've pretty much got the, the market cornered. Um, look, I think 12500 for intro guys. And think about this. I think Bo Nickel with the name, right? He brought in more eyeballs than anybody, I think, coming out of the Dana White Contender Series. Yeah. I mean, you could pay him a little bit more. But you don't think you that he's, he... he's not making more? No, but I'm saying you could. I'm but saying he, he is making more. He is. Is he making more? Yeah. Okay. So let's just say he is. Okay. But I'm saying you could pay him more. Sure. The other ones that are coming out of there, uh, they don't, not quite yet. Not let's yet. let's go ahead and see how it rises. Sean O'Malley, after two or three fights, should have started making more, which I don't know if he did because I think he waited to fight for the Peter Yawn thing yeah. until he made a better contract, yeah. which is smart. Yes, it is. But it's intelligent. But I think I think um, the twelve thousand five hundred. If you win, you make what uh, twenty twenty uh, twenty five hundred twenty five thousand twenty five thousand right? More. Yeah, and get busy. Stay busy. If you want to get rich, if you no, nah, you can't get rich in this. Well, you can. If you want to make a lot of money. Especially in your There's early days. Like the best time to do it is when you're young in your career. Yeah. Because when you get to the top, you don't fight as often because the fights get a lot harder on your body. And you have to really game plan for a lot of these top world-class fighters. Yeah, and the promotion yeah. then starts saying, hey, we can't have you fight because we want to fight you here because you're a bigger draw here. They do the research. UFC does. Like, hey, I know where it's best to fight Sean O'Malley. Yeah. I know where it's best to fight Islam. I know where our numbers and ratings go up. So let them do their job and you focus on doing your job, which is winning fights. And I've always said this, John, winning solves everything, man. And the more active you are, the more Dana White loves you. Yeah. If you call him, look at look at how much look at how much play Kevin Holland got. Like, hey, I'll fight next Holland, week. Hey, I'll do Kevin this. Holland was a guy that Dana didn't really like in the beginning. Yeah. He thought he was a mouthy, just bright, you know, what's which wrong with what's wrong with this guy? Well, but he, you're right. But, you know, Dana's sitting there saying, what's wrong with this guy? And then decides, hey, call the mouthy guy. See if he'll take that fight. He takes yeah, the fight. He, takes he the fight. wins the fight. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey. Yeah. And then he's saying, hey, give me another fight. He goes, all right, I'll give you another fight. And boom. And it just starts rolling. And as, if you don't say no to these fights and you mm-hmm. start taking them and you're winning, as you say, winning solves everything. All of a sudden, you become the guy that Dana White said had, his, had a big mouth to being one of Dana White's favorite guys. And yeah. You can't blame him. You know, you're making his life easy. You're making his matchmaker's life easy. They can count on you. They call, you accept. That's that's as easy as it gets. Why do you think Dana White loves Donald Cerrone so much? Oh, my God. Anytime, Donald's anywhere. Donald's been retired for a bit, right? I mean, he's still like, hey, Donald, I got this. I'll give you $100,000. You ride my bull, Twisted Steel. I think that's the name of it. It is Twisted Steel. You know what I mean? Steel. Yeah. Like, hey, like hey. those and are D- things- Donald is crazy enough to do it, except he tore his bicep. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, he's another guy I'd like to have on this show, man. I'd oh, love yeah. to have him on the podcast. He's a he's great awesome. guy. I'll reach out to him because I like him a lot, man. Yeah. So, uh, but no, I think look, Dana likes guys that are, I don't want to say at the at his beck and call, but guys that he knows he can depend on to to step up at any moment. Any Dana likes guys that will fight. Yeah, that it's a don't fight make promotion. Excuses. Yeah, it's a yeah. Fight promotion. Yeah. So, so, I get it. Um, okay, next thing though is Dana. We're speaking of Dana. Let's talk about Dana. Let's talk about Dana and boxing. All right. I mean, you you know, I was talking to you off air before we came on. Yeah. And I basically said, I go, you know, how are they going to get around the Ali Act? And then I remembered that he's partnering pretty much with Turkey. Yeah. Not Turkey, the country. Turkey, the sheik or the. Yeah. Turkey. Was it Alashiki? Alashiki. Alashiki. Yeah. So he's partnering with him. If he's partnering with him, 
like Saudi Arabia and Riyadh have no or there's no Ali Act. There's no Ali Act over there. Oh, there's not. We have nothing to worry about. Uh, The Ali Act is in North America. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then so he's like, all right, we're gonna have that's that's look, look, Dan has never gone into boxing because he had to get around that. That's right. Dana's not stupid. You know, let's let's be honest. Dana is a, a very savvy businessman and he understands the fight game and how it works and how it worked for him with the UFC because there was no alley act. He didn't have to follow it. And every time he looked at boxing, he's saying, oh, these guys are, you know, it's it's all screwed up. It's all screwed up. This is Dana's way. First off, there's people that he wants to crush. Yeah. You know, there's a guy named Bob Arum out there. Dana would love Mm -hmm. to just crush Bob Arum. And in the position that he's in, Look, with with the money that Turkey and uh, a lot of people in Saudi Arabia can put forward, you know, he's already got a deal with Tom uh, Loeffler over, the, mm-hmm. what's the kid's name? Callum, uh, Callum, Callum Walsh? Callum, Callum, Callum Walsh. Walsh. Yeah, Callum Walsh. Who is the boyfriend of Tabitha Ricci. Okay. And so he's at, he's always at Tabitha. Well, then Dana got involved in his. That kid can fight. I don't know yeah, if you watched can. him fight. He's good. Yeah. You know, and so Dana's he's gotten 16 involved. 0, something like that. He's got like yeah. 14, 16 0. Yeah, he's, like he's somewhere right in there. And so, you know, I don't know if you know who Tom Loeffler is, but he's basically out of California for a lot of his stuff. Uh, you know, he's done a lot of bigger fights and everything. Good, you know, well known in the boxing promotion stuff. Mm-hmm. But now you take just that kid who is fun to watch. He's aggressive, he goes after people. You have someone to work with that you can build and Dana's great at building people you know when he wants to put you know the marketing behind him. Oh, he's the best in the business. So, he's the best look. He's the best. Flat the out business. I've said it too many times. He's the best combat sports promoter there's ever been. I would say that, but then I'd also say that he is his PR team oh. does a fucking phenomenal job. They could sell shit fucking but snow to him. But he's going to have to they create really a second team. You gotta, you can't, oh, use, yeah. can't use the UFCs. I mean, he's got it, but you can't, you know, he's going to have to create a separate, you know, entity mm, with that. I think he yeah. can use the same team. He's just going to have to add some. He's going to have to add more. Look, let's not pretend like Look, these dudes are not working triple but, time. But let's not pretend that he owns the UFC. He doesn't oh, own it. No, he doesn't own it. You okay, so there are people that do own though, it. though, right? He still has no, 10%, I he believe. he does not. No, he is an employee of. I thought he had 10%. No, he still. had to sell. That was part of the whole thing. When they I thought he sold sell. and he got 10% of the new one. That's what I thought. I That's mm-hmm. what I thought. I was, no, that's what I was told. It. He got okay. paid. I know out he got that. paid out on that. Yeah. I know he got paid out on that, but then I was told that he uh, also got no, 10% I'm not, of this I can't one. tell you if um, Ari ended up giving him shares back or anything. Mm. It's possible. And it, you know, obviously it's possible, but he's, he's rolling in it, man. Oh, <laughs> good for him. But um, you, you take a look at the whole the whole breakdown of what he's going to be entering into. You know, it's it's a little weird if you're you know Ari Emanuel, who you own the UFC, you are the the person along with your companies that own it. He is you know someone that works for you and you love him, but now as part of his time is going to be going off towards doing boxing and stuff. And like, you know, you talked about, you know, his, the marketing teams and everything he has in place, they're fantastic, but they're the UFC's marketing teams. So he's going to have to either, and you can't steal those people because that's not going to look good. Right. I I think, I I think you're mixing, I think you're getting confused here. I think honestly, John, talk to me that it's going to, it's going to be under the UFC Zufa banner type thing. It will not be. So you're thinking that he is not, he's going to be bringing Ari Emanuel and all of them together with it. Okay. Then absolutely absolutely he could. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think, I think Dan's not stepping outside of his. No, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Nope, I think his his uh, yeah, that's the way I was looking at it. So you're I right. I think his his connection was, I think his, his if you're Turkey and you're Ari Emanuel and you're Dana White, the best thing you can do is you can create boxing, you can have a lower level boxing, you can also cross box with your with your MMA guys because there is a draw now. We've seen that with Mazdal and and uh, Nate, and we've seen it with Jake Paul and Nate. Yeah. And I believe that Jake is somewhere in there mixed into there 
basically trying to play with Turkey and trying to be like, Hey, I want to get into this as well. My thing is, is, and when I, when I saw this, how, how does De- Oscar De La Hoya play into this? Cause that's what, that's who Oscar went to the fights with. Yeah. <laughs> he went with him. And so, how, like, well, it's uh, funny because Oscar, <laughs> did you see where Turkey was sitting? No. He's sitting down right next to Dana. Mm-hmm. Do you know where Oscar was at? Where? Up in the damn skybox. <laughs> oh, that's smart, though. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. Yeah. I mean, I think that they're going to look, if you're going to do boxing, if Turkey's going to do boxing and Dana's going to be part of it, I'm going to bring in my guys to box. Oscar's going to probably have his guy. Turkey can't have one promoter. You know, no, so I think you're going to have to be able to bring in more. Yeah, you're going to have to have multiple promoters kind of come in. Now I wonder how he's, you know, Dan's going to have to sign talent, work with talent. I mean, that's going to be a more difficult thing. I think it won't be difficult for him to do as an MMA promoter, but to do it as a boxing promoter, how is he going to do that? How are they going to sign talent to boxing? And, and I, I don't know. That, that's, that's, I know he can do it. I just don't know how they'll go about doing it. Because a lot of these boxers are used to just De La Hoya, Bob Arum. Uh, who's the other one? Um, well, you got Frank Warren. I think, and I think, from what I was told, Dana actually signed something with Frank Warren. Frank Warren is from, uh, you know, United Kingdom. There, mm-hmm. uh, he's got like, you know, um, he's got a bunch of you know fighters out of there and stuff, okay. but. He signed a, a deal to try to. He's going to use all of Frank Warren's fighters. So there mm. is one side, yeah, of it. Like you're talking about. Then you would have to look and say, you got people like Eddie Hearn. You Eddie know, Hearn. That's who I was thinking of. Matt. You know, that's um, match. What match? I want to say Matchbox, Match Room, mm-hmm. uh, boxing and stuff. He's got guys like Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. You know, and so there's. I mean. Boxing is set up different, you know, it's it's not quite, you know. But how really. many boxers, true boxers, can be willing to jump and go, hey, I'm going to go sign with Dana White over signing with Eddie Hearn, signing with Bob Arum, signing with Oscar De La Hoya. How many of them are going to be like, yeah, you know, what? I'm going to give this a try. I don't know if it's going to, maybe. They're like, hey, man, he's done a great job being a UFC promoter. Look, I, I look at it this way. Take a look at, um, remember when the PGA had, uh, the the group from Saudi Arabia started signing live live there you go and they had Phil Mick- all of a sudden Phil Mickelson did what mm-hmm. yeah okay. he bounced out over there he bounced uh, out yeah and look at what happened yeah they all yeah. ended up joining yeah they joined and then eventually PGA came in and said look yeah you know, we'll all come under the same umbrella yeah we'll thing. come yeah pretty much yeah guess what. This is very true. He can be doing the same thing. Yeah. That's what they did with the PGA. They can be doing the same thing with boxing. If you guys don't all jump on board, yeah. I mean, let's let's just be honest. Saudi and I was when I was over there, when I talked to a lot of people that were that lived in Saudi Arabia when I was in Riyadh last February. They said, you know, when people talk about Dubai, how beautiful it is, and how how this, how that, it's got all this, and Abu Dhabi's got this and got that, got this. Saudi Arabia has got almost double the money, if not more. Uh-huh. Than those than those other two areas. Uh-huh. If that is the case, John. Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. Like they they can buy you if they want. They can Look, buy. They can spend the money. They can develop their own. We've stuff. both killed a lot of brain cells, but we still have yeah, billi- billions of them. <laughs> yeah, and we ain't got as many brain cells combined as they got money. You know, <laughs> as much as they got money. That's, That's right. It. I mean, like it's. So I think I'm really interested to see how this changes the landscape of boxing because I know that when Canelo was trying to negotiate with Turkey, Turkey got pissed off. It was like, look, I'm just done. Like yeah. you want some astronomical amount of money sure. just to fight nobodies. He's like, and people may be willing to pay that. He's like, but I'm not. So if you want to have like a, a real conversation, come and talk to me. And that's very reasonable. Now, look, Canelo can continue to get the money he gets yeah. right now. But if they start to do this over in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, and they start developing this company, he's going to have no one to fight. But yeah, he can, yeah. he can put everyone under one banner. Like it's you said, under pretty one simple. Like, it's pretty simple. If you look, Turkey is, as you, as you said, he's not going to just let you fight. Nobody's if the, the fights that he's put together there that have become popular, you know, are Anthony Joshua against, you know, in Gano or in mm-hmm. Gano against, Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury against Usyk, mm-hmm. Usyk against you know Joshua. 
those are the fights he's done over there. And those are all, if you can take Ngano and kind of, you know, put him in there based upon his MMA prowess and, and things like that. But you're talking about top level talent with, you know, yeah. Tyson Fury, Joshua, Usyk. They're, they're fighting each other. That's what he's looking for. I will pay the money to put the best against the best. He'll do it. But he's not going to let you just, you know, handpick nobodies that you can just, you know, you know, take a look at Canelo's last fight. You know? Yeah. You watched it. I watched it. It was like, eh, you know, it's boring. You know, he's going through the motions. And he can do that. He has, yeah. He's, he's gotten himself to that point. But it's not going to be something where, you know, you're going to get all these people wanting to watch. It wasn't even, you know, it wasn't sold out at the um, T-Mobile. The arena wasn't sold out. I don't know what it did as far as pay-per-views, but it couldn't have been great. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a ton of boxing fans. No, still uh, out there. T-Mobile was sold out. No, it was not. All right. Well, that's what it was uh, announced. Well, I can announcing, and okay. I can guarantee you when you, you know, it's... No different. Even, Dan, you, even Dana said they sold out. Dana when like, you they see, sold out, we sold out. Good when deal. you see <clears throat> curtains yeah. blocking areas of the arena, what's it telling you? Oh, we sold out the tickets that were available. Yeah, yeah. That's not a sellout. You know that. Uh, <laughs> I, do, I do know that, John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm actually. Inter- I'm very interested in this. Um, in this and how much crossover we'll get. Will we get a lot of crossover from UFC fighters into boxing? Will Dana allow I think it? You, I think you will have some that'll, you know, they're going to want to. And that, you know, if the UFC is part of it, you, then they're going to be able to step right over and do that. Yeah. You know, Can we do it before Max retires, please? Because I want to see Max box. You're not going to get, you're <laughs> definitely not going to get boxers going the other way, though. No, I think you you may get one. Look, Bud Crawford. Oh, possible. Terrence Crawford can wrestle. Yeah. He, yeah. Okay. Yes. A you little. might get one. A little. Yeah, a little. I a get little. it. I understand. Okay. But you can always give and him I, a... And I uh, love Terrence Crawford. Okay, I'm... You could always give him a stand-up guy. <laughs> and why would you do that? Well, let's just be honest. Like, I'm sorry, but Max Holloway ain't gonna... He ain't gonna try to take him down. That's true. Max, is, Max would be the kind of guy to stand with him. You yeah, know what? That let's would just be, see. That would be... And I love Max it Holloway like no one else, but that's not a good okay. idea. Terrence but, Crawford is light special. years. Oh, my God. Okay, but John, oh, he he's light years ahead. But let's be honest, Pauli Malignaggi is a good boxer. Yes, not, not you know like good. It was a good boxer. Yeah, Artem right. Lobov, a mediocre UFC yeah. fighter. But that bare knuckle, bare knuckle. I yeah. get it. And the referee, I'm telling you right now, made it a boxing match instead of a bare knuckle match. And and Pauli still lost. Yeah. So my point is, is that when now Bud Crawford or you know Terrence is going to have to defend with smaller gloves. Now it'll be it, it's, it's a, gonna be different. Defense no is doubt. different. Sure. The offense is even different. Things slip through. Things kicks. Get, yeah, there will be kicks. Big difference. But Max is not a huge kicker. Yeah, but he will be. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, yeah, possibly. I just think that there's there's there are some interesting fights there. Oh, there are. You know, yeah, you could take some. You know, we're looking at Ryan Garcia has talked yeah. about stepping in there and doing. I would love to see it. I would love to see boxing done with MMA gloves. That's okay. all. I just I would love to see Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez fight with MMA gloves. I want to see a world class boxing match with MMA gloves. That's it. Mm. I can, I mean because then you can't roll. You can't. You know Mayweather's. You know uh, no, Philly, Philly Shell. Shell? It's no. not gonna. It's not gonna be as effective. Not that it wouldn't be. It just no, not you'll block. You, you'll parry things. Some things, mm-hmm. but not as much. Yeah. It's just not so I'm excited. Look, the fact that Dana's involved, Oscar De La Hoya was there that night, there with Turkey. You know he's been talking with, you know, um, geez, I keep forgetting his name. The other boxing promoter you just brought up. Frank Warren? No, the one that, that's with Anthony Joshua. Oh, Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn. Gosh, man. Hold together, Joshua. Dude, together. I'll tell you. You know what I mean? So New um, eyeballs, I mean, no brain. I think those three, <laughs> I think those three promoters right there could really make a splash into the boxing world. Well, like, look, if you... If I have, if I put all of our fighters together and we just start signing more talent and saying, hey, we're going to put four or five fights on a card and we go ahead and pay these guys this, this, and this, and we have a standard. Like, Dana, that's what he's done. But you got to figure, put, which, which which promoter does Dana want to squash the most? Bob Arum or Oscar De La Hoya? See, I, don't, I, think, I think Bob Arum. So I do think I. He wants, I think he wants to fight Oscar De La Hoya. Yes, I think yes. he wants to squash Bob Arum. I agree with you. There's a difference. I agree and so, with you. You know, and I think honestly, if they were in a room together, it probably wouldn't go as as cordial as I would like to pretend it would be. But I think they could they could make a business deal happen with Turkey in the room. Yep. 
look, let's not pretend like these guys, they're no different than politicians and true businessmen. They don't let their personal feelings get in the way of money. Yep. You know, and that whole thing that you told me, Lorenzo told you that one time, Oh, you know, business is business. Friendship is friendship, but business always trumps friendship. Yep. That's a pretty, that's a pretty clear statement. And that's Bold what statement, you're dealing with. Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was like, what? But it's, I, for me, it's a, I think it's a, it's a beautiful entry way in if they can get these fighters and boxers under one umbrella, like you were saying. And then you have guys like Canelo that would maybe left out when they're left out. Well, who are they going to fight? And then no one's going to pay to watch them fight. And then you're going to have to come to me. That's, right. that's kind of, I think what Turkey is thinking. Like, oh, and that's I what Dana's so always thought. Yeah. Dana's always thought that way. Yep. Like make them come to us. We're the biggest show. We're going to do this. And would live, live golf. They did that. And they said, Hey, and they made PGA come to them. Yeah, this is, you know, this, this, and this is happening. We need to make sure that we, you know, have all these, the top golfers on hand. Yeah. They know what they're doing and they got the money to spend That's to go ahead and point. make up for it. That's the biggest thing. That's it. <clears throat> if they want somebody, they'll get them. If they don't want them, they'll still pay them. They just, they'll pay them just slightly above what the other people will pay them so they can get them anyways. Yeah. Uh, but they'll know the market. Dana's the best at that. I, I know promoters, they say they are, the other boxing promoters. They're the best at being scumbags behind closed doors. Dana just, he's just the best at being like, Hey, this is what the deal is. I think that's what he, I think that's what their plan is going to be. This is your pay structure. Like how the UFC is. You're going to make this, this, and this based on your first five or six fights in the UFC. Then when you get, you eight wins. Okay. Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and pay you this, this, I'll and this. You up. And you'll that's get, it. yeah, you'll get bonuses based on this. And then when you get to the, the top 10 rankings in boxing and we have control over those rankings, We'll go ahead and end up. We'll decide on what you're going to get paid, and you'll get paid millions because you'll be pay per view. You'll get this, and they'll run. They'll run pay per views. Oh yeah, at a hundred dollars a piece, or ninety nine dollars a piece, or eighty nine dollars a piece, and they're going to crush it, man. They're going to crush it, and they're going to put the one thing I I think you're going to see is a crossover, and it's going to be based upon Dana. You have a lot of fight promotions that put put on cards that, for the most part, the average fan doesn't know who those lower yep. level people are. <clears throat> You're going to see the same kind of things that you see out of MMA where the entire yeah. card is pretty goddamn stacked. Yeah. The reason being is because the PR, the marketing and PR between the, behind the UFC, they are the best in the business. And I think if Turkey sees that, he's like, look, he's got to know that I can fucking sell you dog shit and you're going to love it. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. I mean, like, there's fighters that he's brought and he's given them time. He's helped shape them. But when they first came into the scene, everyone was like, eh, they're not that good. And then over time, they, those fighters have gotten better because confidence builds. And that's how Dana White builds them up. He knows what he's doing. He does. And so he's the best in the business in doing that. And uh, with that type of money and that type of backing to get these boxers to all become under one umbrella, put them on a pay structure and a pay scale of like, hey, you win this fight. This is what you'll make. These are the guys that are already signed. These are the guys that are in your division. These are the guys you're going to potentially have to fight. This is what you're going to make. I mean, those low level boxers in small regional shows, they're making 1200 and 1200. They're making two and yeah. two, you know, three and three. I used to coach one of them when he was first coming up and that's what he was making. He was making trash. And I know that was years ago, but that's what they're doing. So what they'll do much. now is they'll probably start them off at 10 and 10 or five and five, give them a flat rate of five and five and put a pay structure there. Give those boxers an opportunity, a chance to live their dream. And it's up to them to do it. And then what that will do is suck out all the air from other promoters and other people that want to put on boxing matches. And they're like, bro, I'm not, I can't fight for you. Like I can go over here and fight for them at this price when you're trying to pay me 1100 or 1200, but I can go fight for them for five and five and there they want me. And that's going to take all of the, the boxers that Canelo would be able to fight. They won't be there anymore. They're going to be over there with the UFC or not UFC, but Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's exciting news. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's great. You know, it's, it's one of those. It. He's, he's been, uh, you know, Dana came from a boxing background. That's all he cared about for a long time. Is cardio yeah. kickboxing really boxing though? No, you look at, he was teaching cardio kickboxing. Yeah, he, he actually, he, tra he tried to be an amateur fighter. Peter Welsh was the, was his trainer. And Peter Welsh mm -hmm. was the one saying, this isn't for you. And then, nah. but it, it's not for everyone. Hey, who would have won? Mm -hmm. Dana White or Tito Ortiz? Who would have won? Tito. Tito would have won. Look. I think so? Yes. Why Tito back out? Be, money. 
he, he Tito looked look at this is the way the whole thing went because I was supposed to be for a while I was going to be refing it <laughs> then they said no it's a real boxing they're going to bring a guy in uh, one of the, the guys from Nevada like Kenny Bayless or something and it was um it really came down to Dana started to make it Tito put it in his contract Dana said okay you got it but then all of a sudden spike tv got involved and started saying hey you know we, let's put this on and we're gonna do this and there was money now involved and tito wasn't getting paid and tito goes whoa 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 whoa, whoa. And there's money you got you're making money i, I want to get paid and that's what it all came down to was there was there was a financial interest involved and tito had zero <laughs> zero part of it and he goes i'm not i'm not fighting for free if this is what you're going to do that's mm. what it was. Why didn't Why didn't Dana and uh, Tito just go in a gym, in a boxing ring, and just do it there? Because that's what it was supposed to be. Yeah, just but take it, an iPhone. No, Dana made it bigger, man. Dana said, Dana. "Okay, we're you know, you got to figure it. at the at that time, he was trying to make things you know work. He was trying to make mm-hmm. things click. It wasn't like you know the UFC was not what it is today. You know they were struggling, and so it was a way to okay." You know, he had boxed in his youth. He, you know, he's a manager and then president of the UFC. He had him boxed all the time. He was trying to get back in shape and, you know, it was killing him. You know, yeah. Giffy was uh, was uh, the guy training him. And, you know, if you know Gifford, he's a great guy. He's still at Extreme Couture. He still, you know, trains all kinds of guys. You know, trains guys like uh, Kai Kamaka. He's the, he's the, uh, striking coach for Kai and everything. Gotcha. But he's got a ton of guys in, in extreme couture, but you know, he was, he was pushing day to day. was dying, man. <laughs> I was like, well, at least you're getting back in shape, you know? And yeah, he did for a while, but that's why it didn't go off. It wasn't because Tito got was it. afraid of him. It was about money. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, even if it's Dana White, I'm not going to fight you yeah. unless I'm getting paid. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm being on, you know, look, I've, I've seen Dana, Dana spar and stuff and, mm-hmm. uh, but Tito was too big and too strong, and yeah. and although he wasn't a great stand-up fighter, he was good enough to stay with with Dana. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can of sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. All right, hey guys, uh, I want to give you guys, let you guys know, hey, subscribe to us over to OnlyFans. I want to thank you guys so much for following us over there. I mean, John and I will be on, we're going to be taking a lot of our content over there. You guys, we're going to still do our shows here. Nothing's going to change. It's just, it's just another avenue for you guys to reach out to us in an area where we can actually contact you guys. You guys can contact us and we can do some extra content for you. If there's something you guys have questions about, that's the platform to ask us about. On, on YouTube here, I'm not sifting through all these comments. You guys subscribe to us over there. We have about 800 subscribers over there. It's a little bit smaller, but it's another way for you guys to get in touch with us. So subscribe over there. It's free. And if you guys have questions about techniques, you guys got questions about refing, you guys got questions about a farm. Okay, you guys, any of that stuff, uh, go ahead and hit us up over there on OnlyFans, man. Let's just make it organic. They're, they're really making a push into the sports industry. And so um, they've got a lot of top level guys that are over there now. And so I think John and I, we were the ones that were kind of leading the way with our podcast. So we're the very first podcast they ever worked with. And we appreciate it, man. They went out on a limb with us and they never worked with the took MMA or combat sports. They took a chance on us and we took a chance with them. Yep. Uh, we knew we were going to get a lot of flack, man. John Just was a little, little against it in the beginning Just and I was a little against it too in the beginning. But we had to we had to bite the bullet a little bit and go, you know what, let's just give it a try. Let's see what happens. So it's been great. Um you know, a lot of our members, they're also follow us over there. So our YouTube channel members, uh, they also subscribe to us over there. 
And that's why we've built a better relationship with them. And that's why they're members and subscribers to us on our YouTube channel. So uh, thank you guys for continuing to support us. Also, this episode is brought to you by BetUS. And John and I, we released our odds. And this is going to basically drop right before uh, Super Bowl, or not Super Bowl Sunday, but Football Sunday. Yeah. And you and I, real quick, John, I want to go through this. You're going to bring this up because you're ahead of me right now. No, no, no. I'm not going to bring it up. I want to bring up. <laughs> I am ahead of you, by the way. But <sighs> I want to bring up that I took the Raiders on. This is all on the spread. I took the Raiders over the Panthers. Which, which I the, took. Yeah, you did? Oh, yeah, you so did. you copied me because I'm sending you mine. Yeah, that's right. I didn't okay. copy you. But I took the Ravens over the Cowboys. Now, that scares me because the Ravens. That was a, that, I was a looking, tough one. I was looking at that one. Yeah. But it was and, like, man, neither team is playing great right now. It's hard It's hard to freaking go with but it. I got, I got to sometimes try to take the ones that I know are going to be close. I got to take those ones. Like, I'm not just running and taking the, the clear-cut favorites like John is. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, because he's trying to make a comeback. He's losing. I've got okay. six out of ten that I've I've won on my bets. He's got four out of ten. That's embarrassing, John. That's totally embarrassing. Um, I've taken the I Buccaneers over the Broncos. last week. You Just did. Crushed. You crushed. You did. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and you got you even even though you won one, you still lost on the spread. Oh, I know. On one of them. Oh yeah, I did. That just yeah, got killed. Funny. So then I took the Buccaneers over the Broncos, and I took the Niners over the Rams. Now I took the Niners before See, I that's realized. That's what I took too. And I took the Niners before I realized. All of their players are out. McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle. Um, they're all they're yeah, they're one okay, of their yeah. best. Yeah, one of their best uh, defensive linemen or whatever. He's out. Like everybody is out. Yeah. Now, Purdy is there. Yeah. That's it. Purdy. I'm like, great. Great. <laughs> I did the same thing. I was like, yeah, yeah, I took that and I was like, yeah, this, this is I, I'm giving a lot of points and stuff, but the Rams look so bad against the Cardinals. Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden, all the I was like, "Well, it would have been nice, but I gotten that damn information before I put in that that bed." But whatever. The buck you you chose the Buccaneers over the Broncos, like I did. You I chose did. Seahawks over Dolphins, which is a smart play because the Dolphins don't have a quarterback right now. Yep, they may have one by the weekend, but I doubt it. I think they're still going to go with, with the Raiders, Raiders over the Panthers. You picked the Raiders over the Panthers, very smart because the Panthers are the worst team in the league right now. Yep. And you took the Bills over the Jag Jaguars. That's gonna be a good game. I, a good I game. want it to be a good game because I've got. Um, Josh Allen is my QB of fantasy. Okay. So I need it to be a, I need it to be a, a, a gunslinging gunslinging game. battle, but yeah, yeah. well, you, you take a look at this. It's minus five. You got to give up. Yeah. But the bills are just a better team. They're a better team. They're a better yeah. team. And I, w I was scared when they started getting, they got rid of like, I want to say 40% of their roster. Oh, you got this, these are all young kids that they've got. They've, yeah. a, they've taken some in trade. They basically went through the, um, the draft. These kids are balling out that are playing for them. And while, you know? I'm being honest, I was going to take the Jets ah. o over over New England, but New England had been playing tough. Yeah, they and had. I was been. like, man, no, I can't do it. I can't give the points because it was. I think it was three. And yeah. I was like, ah, I just can't give the points. If it was even, I, had, I would take the Jets. I had Brees yeah. Hall, in my, the running back, and okay. he got me, I think, got me 18 or 19 points last night. So yeah. I was cool with that. But, um, but I also have um, Lazard, and I didn't play him. Cause he didn't do shit like the week before. So, but anyways, I also have, uh, Rogers, but he didn't do shit the week before either. So no. I was like, man, but he looked, he, boy, he looked good last night. He did look good last night, but it looks, it's easy to look good when you're dominating. Yeah. So. yeah. But, uh, yeah, th helps. those are, those are our bets. Those are our picks, uh, for this week on bet, bet us. So you guys head over to bet us, hit YouTube, use the code YouTube one fifty to give you 150%. Uh, bonus on your first deposit, 150% bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000. Yep. Man, we've been working with BetUSNS for about five months, six months. Great company, man. Great, easy to work with. They are. And uh, they've got great odds, especially for the NFL. That is their biggest, biggest um, that's uh, sport biggest. that they cover. That's a lot of big, that's a, that's a lot for majority of them. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of companies though, some companies have better Matt March Madness information yeah. and sure. some companies have better NFL and some are better NBA. Uh, but they really hit home on the uh, in the NFL. So check them out. Use uh, use the code YouTube one fifty YouTube one fifty. All right, uh, John. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, Tim Welsh, Anik, and Herb Dean. And I'll give you I'll give you some sound bites on these. Okay. Okay. So I'll give you some sound bites. Let me pull this up real quick. Sorry. Dun, dun, dun. No producer today, so we're doing this ourselves. This is just us just slinging just it out us, there. Buddy. Yeah, you just. Little slinging dicks. <laughs> slinging. All right, so this is this is Anik, who we just had on. If you guys haven't heard the show we did with Anik, make sure you guys go back and listen to it. It was just literally dropped a week and a half ago, awesome. so check that out. 
But here's what Anik had to say. I'm not sure exactly why those imperatives were coming from Herb Dean at this stage of the fight. Hey, Mr. Who doesn't listen to me? Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed to me that Herb Dean was injecting himself in the fight in a way that he didn't need to, even though I really do love him as a human being. I have to be critical on a lot, Mike, and I believe he absolutely deserved that criticism. These were periods of time of like one or two seconds, and Herb Dean is right on top of Rob telling him to fight. And to me, that seemed a little bit odd. And in this situation, I found it to be very off-putting that in the big round of this fight, all of a sudden, Herb Dean is going to insist that Marab work when he's not really doing anything all that differently than he had done for four rounds. I found it to be fucking insane. I'm not sure exactly. I found it to be fucking insane. Uh, I mean, look, I think it's, because I'm, sure. I'm going to go into the Tim Welsh one too, but let's talk about this one first. Um, do you think he was just trying to insert it because the fight was very lackluster? The UFC, yes. Does Herb Dean even care whether there was, that the UFC spent, 30, $40 million on this event. And this is what our main event turns into. Do you think he takes that in perspective too? Like, Hey, you guys, this is, you guys are the main event. He He's absolutely, takes, going. he absolutely takes into account. Hey, everyone paid a lot of money to see you guys actually fight. Now the, the real, the real question here is, is when you say they paid a lot of money to see you fight is Marab doing what Marab does. Yeah. Marab is a guy who is someone that uses his wrestling, puts you on the ground, you know, uh, tries to use ground and pound and then allows you to get back to your feet so he can return you to the mat and just wear you out with his cardio. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He's not the guy who is, you know, he's had knockouts, but not very many. You know, he had the knockout against, you know, how he got in the UFC was against Rafael Stotts. He, he landed a spinning back fist. 15 seconds in and, and got a knockout. But that's just not the norm for who he is as a fighter. You take a look at a lot of his, you know, record is decisions. That's, you know, where he gets his win. He mauls people to the point where he gets the judge's decision and he deserves it. Yeah. When you, when you take a look and you say, you know, as the referee, you're always trying to, hey, if, if I can try to do something that will make the fight better. I'll do that, but it has to be fair to both fighters too. And that's where, you know, I think you're getting the criticism from John Anik is John Anik is looking at it saying, to me, it's not fair for you to tell Marab to do something more than what he's doing based upon this is the way he fights and he's been doing this for the last three rounds, four rounds. And why are you asking him more now saying work, let's work, let's work. But again, when you're saying let's work, it's really not you're you're not you're not telling the guys anything. You're just saying, hey, how many times have you heard someone say something? Hey, you know, improve your position. You hear it all the time, right? That's telling somebody, hey, I expect you to now move from that guard position. You better get to half guard, or you better change something up here, because I'm now telling you, I want something that's an improvement of your position. That's when I say, okay, you're making it to where that guy has to do something. I looked at the whole work, you know, the part of Herb saying work didn't really mean anything. He was just trying to show that, hey, I'm seeing that, you know what, you guys are not super active and, and I'm trying to just make it a little bit more. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, let's let's be honest. The fighters have the total control inside that cage. Absolutely. The ref's not going to the ref's not going to say or do anything that's going to make me do something else. Exactly. Now, like you can tell me to go ahead and to move or improve your position. I get that. That's like a warning. And we've talked about that. You guys talk to us about that in the back, but if I'm on my feet and he's on his feet, he has as much ability to make this fight work That's as right. well as me. Yeah. So telling me to work, I don't know if, if Herb was really just saying, Hey guys, let's go, let's work. Or if he was trying to tell Marab to work. See, but I don't think I, don't, I, I mean, he, he wasn't, he was telling both, was telling of them, both let's fighters. Work. Let's go. Yeah. Like it's up to Sean to push the pace as much as it up for up to Marab yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah, well, you know, and people are saying, well, he's telling Marab, it's he's saying it to Marab because Marab was circling, you know, and Marab and you had Sean trying to, you know, pace him mm -hmm. down. That's Sean's job to cut him off. That's yeah. that's just the way fighting is. If someone's going to move from you, you can either follow him or you can do the right thing and cut him off and force him into the direction that you want yeah. him to go. But let's also not forget what got us in that situation was that Sean didn't have a good four rounds. Yeah. And so well, we were in that fifth round and then the ref is basically saying like, Hey, 
one guy now, and this is when people talk about open scoring. That's right. This is the type of shit that I'm talking about. Like, hey, Marab already knows he's up. Like, why am I going to take more chances? I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to punch, wait for you to overcommit, and then shoot in and blast double, get you down and hold you down until you get up. And then I'm not going to fight getting letting you up. And then I'm going to try to get you back down again, circle far enough away outside of your range. That's exactly what he did. He yeah. won a world title doing what was best for him. You That's know? right. And, uh, and you, you can't blame him. The ref. No, you I can't don't blame, blame him at all. But, John, this one here strikes me a little bit, is a little bit more interesting for me is Tim Welsh, uh, Sean O'Malley's coach, was bringing this up. Just annoying when they talk about, he likes to just bring up sportsmanship and, man, this is a professional sport. It's like, dude, you're kissing my buddy's back, trying to smash his face. It's not. And then well, what kind of made me angry is when he got up, that Herb got in the middle of him. I don't know how much it would have necessarily mattered, but he did kind of get in the way. And if, if Rob just stands up and lets him up mm -hmm. and, and walks back, then that's not a pause. Like... Um, can you imagine if Sean would have like thrown a head kick or something and that's how the fight would have been? I mean, I swear if Rab wouldn't have, I mean if Herb wouldn't have got in his way and he could have turned his hips and his shoulders over, he might have KO'd him right there, but <laughs> that would have been I mean, that would have been like uh like Mayweather and, and, yeah. and Ortiz. Yeah. Yep. It's annoying when they talk about So uh, I, look, Tim does have a, a point. in okay. this situation, why? Why does why does Herb get in the way? I mean, Marab literally just gets up and walks away. Okay. Why Herb got in the way? And and you know, Josh, it's like anything. You know, there's things that happen in fights that when you were fighting, it was like, holy shit, what the fuck was that? Mm -hmm. What did what did you just do? Well, it happens for referees too. And I've been in this position where I had a fighter kiss another fighter. All right. And it's what you look and you go girl on girl or boy on boy. <laughs> it's boy on boy, baby. And it was like, what the fuck did you just do? And it takes you that second to realize you just fucking kissed him. Right. So then it's a matter of, okay, how are you going to deal with it? So I can tell you, you know what? I stopped the fight time. Get to your goddamn corner. I took two points from him. Two points. In a three round fight, John? Two points. What you asshole. want, you want, I'm an asshole. You're right. <laughs> you want to do something that is absolutely not part of our sport. No one asks you to do it. No one wants you to do it. And you want, you think you want to be cute? Congratulations. You better go finish the fight now. So, cause I'm, I can disqualify you if I want. I'm going to give you the chance to go win the fight. But that's something that when that happened, Herb, was caught off guard. Let's just be honest. He got caught off guard and he went to stop the action and then kind of got in between, but wasn't sure of what he should do because he knew the end of the round was here. And now Marab is walking off. Like it's the end of the round. He should have either made a decisive stop time. You get over there, you get over there and do something about what just occurred, whatever he's going to do. If he wants to just, you know, give him a hard warning over it. That's fine. If you want to take points, take points for unsportsmanlike conduct. That's fine. But he got caught in the middle of it. And if you are not going to do something about the kiss, then you should have let Sean get up. And yeah. if Marab's, Marab's walking away, it's called protect yourself at all times. You want to walk away? That's your choice. I'm not here to tell you that you can't do it. I'm going to tell you I think it's stupid. And I'm going to let this guy just, you know, kick you to the to the head. While you're not looking, yeah, I'm going to let him do that because that's part of the sport. It's a 360-degree sport. He can do that. If it's boxing, it's different. Boxing, I have to stop and make sure that you're facing the opponent because he can't attack you if it's your back. If it's MMA, you can be attacked. Mm -hmm. So I understand while, why Tim is kind of looking at it and saying, man, we had an opportunity there and you kind of got in the way. Yeah, he just got caught in that position of, Holy shit, I'm a little bit shocked by that. What the fuck was that? Yeah. I, and I think Tim was also very shocked. Like, you have another male kissing my my fighter's back. <laughs> yeah. And it just was a very weird scenario and situation. I don't think anyone really knew what to do during that situation. Marab didn't even know what to do. He just got up and walked away. He's like, <laughs> all right. He's like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. He finished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> like, I'm done. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I think Herb did. He made a mistake in, a little in that bit. scenario, in that situation. Yeah. But like I said, it's, like I said, it's very, it's, it can be something that does. It's not common. No, it's not. And it catches. If 
if you're the referee, it catches you off guard. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. You, you have to think about it. You have to think, what did I just see what I think I just saw? You know? And, mm -hmm. and so it's that you're, you're used to the norm and you see it and you react to it and you know how to react to it. It's when you see something that is not the norm to you, it catches you and it makes you, you know, become that, what, what, what should I do? Yeah. This is where you pre-plan. You know what you're going to do in all these different situations because you've thought them out before they ever happen. No one thinks of that shit. Not that stuff. I'm, I'm telling you, you I, I'll kiss in the guy. And I swear back. to God, you know, and there, there was a famous uh, boxing referee. His name was Marty Denkin. <clears throat> and he was out of California. Marty's in the, he's, he's uh, like in uh, the Rocky movies. Mm -hmm. You know, Lou Flurpo was, was one of the referees. All the guys that were the, the referees in the Rocky movies all mm -hmm. came from California. But Marty was in there also. And uh, he had a son, David, who was... Uh, they didn't use Philly referees? What a bunch of jerks. <laughs> Come on, you would think like Philadelphia, yeah. like you yeah. didn't use Philly referees? True. But I had seen in a boxing match... What happened to David, hiring local David, talent? John? David have that problem. And so that was what made me think, holy shit, what would I do? And then eventually in a small show, it happened. And so I, I knew exactly what I was going to do off of it. And it is those things that you are able to think about and come up with your answers before they ever happen. They're going to go smoothly. It's when you have not thought about it that now you're trying to think and catch up. If Herb Dean would have taken two points away from a Rob, Dana White would have flipped his fucking. Yeah. Head. And it's different when you're talking about a championship. A, a fight class, and everything. Yeah. yeah. You're going to do things different. A very stern warning. Yes. When you're talking about preliminary fights in, in low level stuff, it's like, Hey, you want to be a fighter? Start acting like one. It's yeah, a little bit different. That's true. I get it. A little bit of professionalism, right? There you go. That's what you want. That's what you want. I mean, I, I think I think Tim's got a good point. I think Annex got a good point, but I think Herb in both these situations and scenarios, it's understandable why he was putting those. Like, yeah. You have the main event. They, apparently you're never coming back to the sphere. You guys this is a big deal, man. Like, and this is the fight you guys are presenting. It is what it is. But it. it's also not up to the ref to try to insert himself too much. I will tell you and this. I don't I, think he did, to be I honest. tell people this all the time. I tell you know when I'm teaching people. As a referee, a referee can make, you can't make a bad fight good. Not going to work. Nothing you do is going to make a bad fight good, but you can definitely make a good fight bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see it all the time in the NFL, man. All their flags yeah. and shit. There you go. They ruin a fucking good game in no time. Yep. I mean, you That's get it. fucking three minutes in and all of a sudden there's seven flags. You're like, man, just Come on, you man. just go to the locker room. Get out of here. <laughs> Beat it, son. Yeah. Um, I get it. All right, hey, there's uh, one more thing I wanted to, to talk about real quick was this little clip of our boy, or my boy, uh, Umar Namagomedov had a little a little back and forth with our boy Usman. Oh, he did. I saw that. <laughs> Kamaru Usman. I love it. <laughs> Kamaru's awesome. I thought it was. I thought it was funny. Let me just read it. It says, this is when you know, man, what are you going to do? We just had Kamaru Usman on the show, man. He was fantastic. He gave us, you know, 30, 40 minutes of his time. I appreciate him, especially after some things that I said about him a while back. And he's like, hey, man, it kind of hurt. You know, like, <laughs> not hurt, but like, all right, I remember that you said this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and hey, I took responsibility for it. I have to. Yes, I have you to, did. I can't invite someone onto my show and not actually bring up the fact that I said this, this, and this. That would make me less of a man. That's not me. Um, but he said, you know, Kamaru Usman goes, I'm the boss of the UFC welterweight division. And then Umar Nurmagomedov, 135 show. pound fighter, and they're they're close. They're both managed by Ali. They're yeah. close. They, they they've been around each other for a lot. They've probably been around each other for most of Umar's adult life. <laughs> so you know what I mean, like. But he goes, "Sorry, man, but right now you're not. Sorry, brother. Right now, Bilal Muhammad is the boss." Yeah. Basically talking about the 145 pound division. But I thought it was very funny. Pound division. It's 170 pound division. You've <laughs> gotta you've gotta watch the video though. To put it in perspective, it was a very fun banter back and forth that made it real fun because Umar is, you know, he he's just he's just sticking up for it someone. Was a, but it was also the look on Henry Sue. Yeah, <laughs> Henry's like, I'm in the middle. Oh like, no. Oh <laughs> yeah. I thought it was great. It I thought was. it was great. But I'm gonna play you the video uh and the sound on it, and then I'm gonna and then we'll go from there. You're the champion, you are the boss of the division. I am the boss of the welterweight division. I took a little break, you know, two years break, 
relax, take care of my body a little bit. Next year, I will come back. Inshallah, I will show these guys I'm still the boss. <laughs> I, but right now, you, and inshallah. Sorry, man. But, <laughs> but right now, you know. <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry. Right. sorry. Bilal, Bilal Muhammad, right now, oh. boss, man. <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a little damn. damn. You're the champion you are. I thought it was. Oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was fun banter back and forth. I thought it was a great um, little short clip that I saw. But good on them, man. Just fun. Just fun to be around that. But uh, um, that was supposed to be our last thing. But I want to just talk real quick, John. We have two more things, okay? And two more things is two fights. We're going to talk about the the main event, uh, Moicano versus Saint Denis, oh. and then we're going to talk about Imovov versus Brendan Allen. That, this is what we'll wrap up on. Just want to let you guys know that we're going to be talking about this real quick. And uh, we're going to be doing it again later on in the middle, you know, for the midweek show. But we want to give you guys a little extra content on this fight. Um, Moicano versus Benoit St. Denise. What do you think? Man, I'll tell you what. This is a, this is a fantastic fight. I love Moicano. I love the way that he's gone and uh, going up in weight from the – Featherweight division at 145, into the 155s. He had that fight with Jalen Turner. He was in trouble. Jalen Turner thought he had a walk-off knockout. That ended up being the worst move of his life because he ended up losing that fight based upon that. And Moicano has been absolutely just fire on the mic. He has been so good, so funny. Just everything he says, I'm loving the guy. And then there's Benoit Saint Denis, who is quiet. He's a killer. Yeah. He took that fight against uh, Dustin Poirier. He was doing well against Dustin. He was, you know, he was, you know, obviously there was, you know, moments where, you know, they were throwing down, and he was getting the best of Dustin in some of those. But we've seen how good he can be, and I'm not. I'm I'm of that irk where I look and I go, I don't know if. Moicano has grown into that division enough to where he can handle someone the size because, you know, St. Denis has fought at 170 also, and he's big. For 155, mm -hmm. he is a load, and he is a tough son of a bitch. You have to finish him. And so this is just a – I'm not saying, you know, both guys can win it. It's a fantastic matchup. I look at it, you know, St. Denis has, what, got two losses. I think Moicano has got like 15 and four. So both of them have incredible records uh, coming into it. And this is going to definitely, you know, move that one person up into that top, right at top five, top, you know, top six position uh, in the lightweight. So I just look at, I can't wait for that fight. I think it's just a phenomenal matchup. Yeah, I would agree with you 100%. Um, I think uh, Moicano has grown into that weight. I think he's where he needs to be. Yeah. I think his body frame, like a tall, long, and lanky, at 145 was fucking ridiculous. At 155, he's still a little bit tall, long, and lanky for that weight class. He's no Jalen Turner. Yeah, no one is. But he he belongs in the 155-pound weight class. Yeah. Um, where I think he's going to have a hard time with is the power. St. Denis has got power. He's got a chin. St. Denis can take shots. Yep. I mean – and he, can, and he can grapple right, right with can, Moicano. I think Moicano's the better grappler, but Do I you? don't know if he's the physically better, a good enough wrestler to really get him down and control him. And so St. Denis, we've seen, he can take a lot of damage on the ground. We've seen that. Thought he fucking died his first fight in the UFC. So did I. You know, and then he comes back and he just went, went on a run until he faced uh, Dustin. Which tells you everything you need to know about him. It, exactly. Moicano, to me, since 45, I feel like his chin's gotten better since 55, yeah. but it's still not, I think, at the level it needs to be at to fight St. Denis. If he gets caught by St. Denis, one or two good shots. I mean, I know it can happen to anybody in a fight. Sure. If anyone gets caught clean, anyone get knocked out. But St. Denis seems to find the mark a lot more frequently uh, on his opponents. And Jalen Turner's got power. Jalen Turner's got good. He's got good, great striking. He's got the reach and the range and all that stuff. But he's he's also... He's not, he's not St. Denis. And so that's where I'm kind of like, I'm leaning more towards St. Denis. And I think if you look at the odds, I haven't looked them up yet. We'll, look, we'll talk about that in the midweek show. I'm going to go with St. Denis on this fight. Sadly, though, I say this because I was really looking forward to the Patty Pimlet and Moicano fight. <laughs> and I think if Moicano loses, there's really no, 
there's there, there's not really I don't know if there's a whole lot of interest then for him to fight uh, Moicano coming off of a loss. So then you start talking about having him fight somebody else, you know, like a Benel Dariush or a Dan Hooker. Yeah. Dan Hooker would be a great fight, but that's a big jump up now that he's at number five. So there's guys there. I wouldn't mind seeing Chandler versus uh, Patty Pimlin either. That's another no, one. That'd be a good one. I wouldn't one. mind seeing that. That would no, be a fun fight. That would be a good one. Uh, but that to me, this this fight is going to be a knockdown drag out. But I do think that Moicano, if he gets clipped, that it'll be over. It'll be over earlier in the first yeah. round, round and a half. Um. And then I think if it starts going a little bit longer than a round, round and a half, I think you're going to start seeing the submission and the grappling play a factor. Because Moicano is smart. He's slick. He's smart. When he gets to the ground, I think he's the better, a little bit better grappler than St. Denis. Yeah. Technically. Technically, he might be. But strength-wise, I don't think there's a comparison. Yeah, I don't think there's a I, th- I think it's going to go to St. Denis. Yeah. All right. Uh, next fight. Imovov against Brandon Allen. Again. Great <laughs> matchup. Look, Imovov is, you know, he had the fight. What was it? Strickland? Is it, was that his last loss? I, uh, say, I, be, I believe I so. It, I think it was Sean Strickland. He's had a couple of fights where he's gotten wins and he's looked really good and he's really coming into his own. But no one in the middleweight division is more on fire other than the champion in DDP than Brendan Allen. And you can even, I think Brendan Allen is what, eight? on an eight fight win streak right now. And it could be nine. If you can include the, the Marvin Vittori in the uh, hard rock, <laughs> in the casino, at the, hard, the, casino rock at the hard rock, which did yeah. not happen according to uh, Gerald Merchart. So seven fight win streak. Is it seven fight? Okay. So, yeah. but and to be he, honest, he redeemed that one. His last fight with the win over Chris Curtis uh, was Chris his Curtis. last loss. Yep. But then he beat uh Punalehi and Soriano and then he beat uh Carl Robertson. Okay. So his last his actual last loss that he hasn't redeemed was Sean Strickland, man. Okay. Well, and then before that though he was he was uh, on a tear. He had another six fight win streak, two, four, six, seven, seven fight win streak. He beat Kyle Dawkins, Tom Breeze, Kevin Holland, Aaron Jeffrey, uh, Moses Morietta, Tim uh, Tim Hiley, Larry Crow. I mean, he beat all those guys. His last fight was his last loss before the Strickland one was Anthony Hernandez. So, okay. you know, he's, he's been, he's looked better yeah. and better. His stand up has gotten way better. His ground has always been damn good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he really, it looks like he's confident now. He's going to need that against Imovov. Yeah. But I tell you what, like I said, he's been on fire. So I expect him to come out with a ton of confidence. Obviously, Imovov is going to be in the same position. Again, I've always looked at Imovov as he gets a little tired. But in his last fight, he definitely did not. So yeah. he's, he's, I think he's got that under control. He knows exactly how to pace himself, when to take breaks. It's all, it's all starting to come about for him and stuff. So, that, again, fantastic co-main event. Yeah, I think in his last two fights, because he fought Roman Delizzi before that, he went all five rounds. Yeah, controlled just, the whole fight. He just dominated smoked the whole him. fight. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it's easy to go five rounds. I should take that back. It's not easy to go Never five easy. rounds. But when you're controlling the tempo of the action, it's a little bit easier. Sure, you're more relaxed. You're, you're in control you, you have control of the fight. Yeah. Uh, then he fought Jared Cannonier, got the finish in the fourth round. I mean, he dominated that fight. Dominated yeah. the fight. So yeah. same thing. Uh, you know, his last loss was Sean Strickland. They went five rounds also. So, I mean, he's he's got he, he got tired in the Sean Strickland fight, though. But Sean's relentless pressure yeah. is it's not easy to deal hard with. It doesn't matter with. who you are. I mean, Izzy had a hard time with him. You know, Izzy was on a ran- Izzy was on a tear doing during that time too. I mean, I know he lost to Alex, but he lost to Alex by getting knocked out. It wasn't because he was tired, not because he was getting outboxed or out kicked. You know, he yep. just he just got caught, got clipped. Um, I agree though. Uh, I was there right in the casino when I was watching Brendan Allen and uh, and Vittori get after it. Yeah, I mean, they just Brendan Allen just walked right at him and just boom, boom, oh, boom, yeah, yeah. through the two piece and a biscuit. Rushed him, just got on him, man, and then you know that was it. And then got out. And then got out. I was like, man, I'm out of here before I get arrested. Smart. It. Yep. Uh, it wasn't a casino, by the way, <laughs> and uh, there's cameras everywhere, by the way. Um, but I think it's going to end up shaping up to be the main event, the co-main event. These are going to be fights that live up to the potential. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Brendan Allen's going to have to find a way to to catch him off because he's very good with his lateral movement. He's very good at doing his getting his striking off and then getting out circling he's hard to take down brendan allen can he's gonna i think it's 
a little bit undermatched when it comes to the feet, but I think on the grappling, he's the better fighter. Yeah. So no doubt. Um, on the yeah. ground. Yeah. On the ground. There's no doubt that Brendan Allen is the better fighter. I mean, his striking looked Way good more at the tools. casino, though, John. <laughs> <laughs> his striking looked good at the casino. But uh, good stuff, man. Good yeah. stuff. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap up our show for today. Hopefully, you guys had a wonderful, wonderful weekend and a great Sunday. Enjoy. And uh, if you guys checked out our betting odds, man, pick up some odds at YouTube 150. That's the promo code, YouTube 150 at BetUS.com. BetUS.com versus YouTube 150. 50 is the promo code 150 percent bonus on your first deposit up to two thousand dollars i want to thank you guys also subscribe to us over at um only fans i want to thank you guys for following us over there and our last thing element make sure you guys are drinking your element it's still hot outside it was 100 degrees here today in texas and uh drink your element man stay salty my friend and enjoy we are out for everyone out there be good to someone. Treat someone special that you care about, and we will see you.